It might be eight o'clock by the time we get on. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the next episode of Wine for Betstree. It is so difficult to believe that we are in our 53rd month. We are starting season three here with Wine for Betstree, and we are back to A, and we have an exciting, great variety for you. We have a Rene here, which is from Armenia, and we have wines of Armenia with us today to talk about everything about Areni. But before we get into that, for those of you who do not know me, my name is Lori. I am your co-host here tonight, and I am owner of Dracina Wines. I am a podcaster, obviously, and an award-winning blogger. And I am a Somme Day certified champagne specialist, Cote de Ronde specialist, and um, I am signing up to be the Wine, uh, wine Scholar Guild uh, Spain, uh, of Spain, Spanish wine. So that is my next Very adventure, cool. next adventure. And my co-host is Debbie Giaquindo. And yes, I'm Debbie Giaquindo, and I can't wait to hear about the Spain course because I want to take that. Um, I'm a certified specialist of wine and a wine location specialist in port and champagne, and just recently a certified sherry wine specialist. I'm the author of Tapping the Hudson Valley, Day Trips and Weekend Itineraries Visiting the Hudson Valley Area. And I'm also a partner in a restaurant, Trio North Wildwood, and we opened for the season April 1st. And I think that's about it. If I miss something, well, <laughs> I just can't It'll be there mind. tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And with us today from Wines of Armenia is Stefan. And forgive me if I pronounce your last name wrong, but I'm going to give it a whirl. Bagasarian. Well, you did better than a lot of other people. It's Stefan Bagasarian. <laughs> okay. That, that's Bagasarian. You were that's close, good. Deb. You were dead. Close, you were close. <laughs> uh, with wines of Armenia. And and Stefan, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, thanks for having me here. It's a great opportunity for me. I love talking about Armenian wines and uh, and happy to do it with you guys tonight as well. Um, my name is Stefan Bagdasarian. We are winesofarmenia.com and we're the largest retail of Armenian wines in the United States. Personally, I'm a lawyer by training. However, uh, a while back, I decided I want to pursue my passion in wine. So I jumped in head first into the wine business, and I'm happy to have done it. Uh, we are importers, we are distributors, and we are online retailers of uh, wines, Armenian wines and French wines and other wines as well. But one of our main focal points are Armenian wines. And... Uh, and I, we're happy to do it. This is Armenian wines. It's an exciting time for Armenian wines and a lot of happening. I always say that Armenian wines are going through a renaissance right now. And uh, we can talk, we'll talk more about it later on, but it's a really, really exciting time. Some phen phenomenal wines are coming out of Armenia and we're happy to bring them to you. Well, I am so excited to have you on because you can hear the passion for Armenian wines in your voice. And you were generous enough to send Debbie and I both three bottles yes. of Areni. So we are going to be um, tasting through them. And you're going to guide us through, hopefully, of how they um, are similar and the differences between them uh, because of uh, the expressions and the winemakers' philosophies of, of winemaking. So I'm very excited. So, Deb, I don't know which one you are picking up first. But well, you pick up to do our up. clink to do our little clink. I have Old Bridge. Okay, I'll take Noah. Okay, and so I'm going to raise our glass for our first clink because Stefan, Debbie, and I have agreed like three years ago that we wouldn't drink until we see each other yes. on screen. So it is clink time. Yeah. So Slancha. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. 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 Nice. All right, we're gonna get into this. Oh, because that is good. That is yeah, that is good I'm, stuff. I'm an Armenia wines virgin, so this is yeah. real. I'm impressed. All right. You can All only right. say that once. Yeah. yeah dang, she's done. <laughs> she's done. All right. Let's see if we can get Elmo to work this time. All right, should be in there. Oh, 
Okay. It's not coming. There we go. Did you hear, did you hear sound dead? I did. What we lost uh, Stefan. We lost Stefan. He'll, we'll we'll kind of just talk a chat before. Um, but there Stephon, he is. Yeah. He's back. He's back. Yeah, I, I don't see you guys though. You don't see us. Uh-oh. Oh, hit the, really? We can okay, see you. Okay, now I do. Okay, now I do. Okay. All, All right. right. All right. So I. Stefan, you don't, I'm going to share this with you. That might be the very first time that Elmo actually worked all the way through okay. without an error. We normally have multiple Elmos or Elmo possessed and starts going in and out or anything, but I, I muted myself on everything. Debbie said she heard the music. I'm pretty excited. I heard the music too, by the way. Woo. Woo! All right. All right. So see third season, the charm. I think That's I conquered right. Elmo. Wonderful. All right. So let's start off with a little bit about you. So you had said that you are um, you're a lawyer by trade, and then you decided to get into the wine game and fall, and you fell in love. So I, there's loads of people who get into the wine game, but you got very specific and fell in love with Armenian wine. So what happened? What did you find? What did you taste that you said, I love Armenia wines? Okay. Well, I mean, it's a little bit, it, take, it takes a little bit more time than that. Everything is a process. Uh, when I decided I wanted to get into wine business, initially, it wasn't the Armenian wine that grabbed my attention. It was uh, South American wines. Um, I used to travel on business to Brazil, Argentina, Chile uh, as, a practice, as a lawyer. So I got to have a chance, I taste, have a chance to taste, to be with, and... Uh, be among the winemakers in Argentina, in Brazil. Imagine there were there's some phenomenal wines coming out of Brazil, but not not particularly not on the West Coast, some on the East Coast. But nevertheless, I started getting into this whole wine world, and eventually started my business in the United States of importing wine from South America and from Europe. That I'm, I'm Armenian by origin, uh, so I always had this affinity towards Armenian products, and about 15 years ago, had you told me that, Stefan, one day you're going to be selling a lot of Armenian wines, I would have told you, what have you been drinking? Let's face <laughs> it, about 20, 15, 20 years ago, Armenian wines weren't as good as they are right now. There was there was not much effort put into it, given the effects, the lingering effects of communism, that Armenia was part of the Soviet Union long, about 30 years ago. So the the, the there wasn't that much effort put into quality wines. But about 15, 16 years ago, there was this slow movement started happening in Armenia, thanks also to a great deal of diaspora Armenians going back to Armenia and taking with them technology, investment, and know-how. I mean, Armenia is the cradle of wine. There have been archeological finds going back 6,100 years, we finding winemaking um, wineries, clay jars for wine purification, for wine aging, and they've done DNA test testing on those jars, and they found and the same uh, DNA uh, within those jars. So Armenia is the cradle of wine. However, there was a long lag time whereby, uh, can you see me? Yeah. Yep. Okay, I, I, I do not see you. So thanks to invest foreign investment by diaspora and Armenians, Armenia is going through this renaissance and things have been tremendous. Uh, people seem to love the wines. People seem to enjoy the wines. And 
people are supporting the brands, supporting the wines, and this is because the quality has improved tremendously. Uh, and we're happy to be part of this. And that's when the process started of uh, getting more and more into Armenian wines and supporting the wineries, supporting the winemakers, and bringing them to the greater United States for people to enjoy something new, something different, something great, something delicious. That's wonderful. That, that is great. So now a little bit about the Arreni grape. Can you tell us about uh, it? I don't I mean, see you I, guys. Well, we see you. Okay. We see you. So we'll Arrani, let you know okay, when we don't okay, see no you. Okay, no problem. Arreni is uh, one of those quintessential uh, Armenian grape varietals. Uh, right now, um, it's a majority of the wines, red wines, that are coming out of Armenia are made from Arani grapes. Arani goes back to the village of Arani, which, which is in the Vyotzor province uh, of Armenia, which is the southeastern part of Armenia and a two hour drive from Yerevan, the capital of Armenia. Within this region, there is this area, this village called Arani. And that's where they found these archeological sites tracing the Arani grape going back 6,100 years. Um, that's where they believe it started, this grape started, this uh, indigenous grape varietal started. And some stories tell us that it was, it was Noi who, uh, who planted these years and years and years and years ago. But be that as it may, uh, Arani is a tough, thick skin, red grape varietal, which needs to be tamed. And the way they tame this historically is aging these in clay jars. And nowadays, however, uh, they age both in clay jars, which they call amphora in some other regions, as well as in Artsakh or Armenian oak barrels. And that tames the grape and gives you this pure fruit, which is absolutely delicious. And is you said Armenian um, oak barrels? Is are you getting are you getting the wood from Armenia? Or Absolutely. Is... There's this thing called Armenian oak. That's uh, that. These are oak trees that grow in the Caucasus, in Armenia, in Artsakh, in uh, the whole region. And Armenian oak or the Caucasian oak tends to be denser and thicker than French oak, which helps age and tame the RNA grape. As I said, it has a very tough skin and tends to be tannic initially. You need to be able to soften that up through aging. Historically, they had done that within the amphora clay jars over a long period of time. In the modern days, they do it in these clay, in these Armenian oak barrels which serves the same purpose. Of course, the taste profile tends to be different because um, it picks up characteristics from the oak itself. And what are those characteristics of that? Of that? Uh, are in, depending on the winemaker, depending on the appellation that the grapes are from, uh, you have this sour cherry, a lot of dark fruit. Some are softer than others, whereas but this Sour cherry and dark fruit are omnipresent in all of uh, our any wines at different degrees, depending on the winemaker, the characteristics, the appellation, and how long they've aged these grapes. And now you 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 said that the grape is Arani and the the region is also Arani. Um, so the the grape was named it. So we have this entire region of Armenia that produces grapes, but is this the region? Is that Areni region, the region where okay. they believe uh, is the actual home this is the of wine the grape? growing regions of Armenia. Okay. And um, if you look at the orange part here, yep, that's called Vyotzor. Right now, most Armenian grape wines are coming from this area, Vyotzor. Within Vyotzor. There is a place called RNE Village. And that's where they believe this grape was first planted about eight, nine thousand years ago. 
And uh, that's where it's mostly RNA is a red grape variety, as I said. And a lot of it is going from here. But that's where the most of Armenian grapes and most of RNA. However, RNA is planted throughout Armenia. And it's indigenous to Armenia. And I don't know of any other locations that are growing our RNA varietals that I know of. But it's prominent in Armenia. It's indigenous to this region. And it seems to be very doing very well right now. And given different interpretations, yeah, given different uh, treatments, depending on the winemaker and what are they trying to achieve. Okay. Shall we maybe taste one of the wines and talk about... Oh, Let's twist taste, my uh, arm. Tell me which one you're tasting so I can talk about them. Yes. Which one you want to start with? What, what um, was, you start with the, the Noah and go from... Yes, that sounds you know? like a good idea. Okay. So for those of you that are watching, this is the Noah. So it is N-O-A. This is a 2017 Otterene Noir, so red. And it is from, as uh, Stefan had said, from the Violets de Zor region. Correct. Okay. Now, you. this says, before we taste, this says Otterene Noir. Are winemakers doing a white wine from Otterene? No. Okay. Um, the, the grape is RNA. Some wineries in order to find some parallels in the outside world, call it RNA Noir to, to, to sound or to, to, to make people aware that it's similar to, let's say, although it's not a, it has nothing to do with Pinot Noir, it just sounds more acceptable if they put the name RNA Noir. Uh, some wineries call it RNA Noir, others call it RNA. I personally prefer if they just call it RNA. Okay. But in order to find more acceptance, maybe in the outside world, they add the noir into it just to designate that. Oh, yeah, it's a uh, it's a it's a red grape red variety. Grape. Although it is is only red grape variety, and there's no white R in per se. Okay. Well, I think that that I I can understand why they're putting the noir because especially Americans, they're very timid to pick up a bottle that they don't know what it is. And like, for example, this bottle is dark, like it's a it's a dark bottle, so you can't yeah. really see into it. So as an American who's not familiar with Arani, I'm going to go, hmm, is this a white? Is this a red? What is what am I getting here? So I can understand why they would want to put the noir, the noir on there. Uh, Americans are a little hesitant when they don't know what's going on. But I kind of so, like on the label. Here around here, it yeah, has the year, and it has everything that you wanted to know about the wine, the variety, color, you know, what the characteristics are of it. I just think it's kind of cute. It's like a, it's like a tasting, tasting because profile. Because I certainly can't read because I need a magnifying glass now to read the back of the bottle. But that's because <laughs> my eyes are bad. Yes. Yes. But it is a very cool bottle, and yes, it. This says yeah. the top says one hundred percent that are any noir. Medium ruby, pronounced aromas of red cherry, black currant, uh, and subtle violet uh, notes with a touch of spiciness. So I actually got pretty much that. And I think. Oh, it's, wow. Now, isn't it? so this, so the first one I picked up before when we clinked before Elmo was Old Bridge. This is much more floral essence than the Correct. old than the old bridge. Correct. Yeah, I just smell the um, old bridge, and it's much more dense berry. Mm -hmm. I thought just from my first uh, smell. So, Stefan, can you tell us a little bit about this winery yes. and and right. or winemaker? Uh, no, of RNE is a modern interpretation of the RNA grape. Uh, this winery is owned by a Swiss winery that they've decided to be as their first venture out of Switzerland is to make wine in Armenia made with Armenian indigenous varietal. So this is a modern inter interpretation of the, uh, of the RNA grape and Armenian wine in general, where it's 
the fruit is a lot more pronounced okay. and both in the nose and on the palate. And uh, so there's longer, so it is a modern interpretation of it. So you have a lot of dark cherry in here, some spiciness on the finish. The nose is very fruit fruity. And this is a wine that's, you know, in the United States, in California in particular, we make a lot of fruit forward wines. Mm -hmm. We are easy to drink. You don't need food with them. You just drink it with your friends at a gathering or with food for that matter. But never, you don't need food. This is an example of that where they are making wine for easy to drink uh, uh, purposes as opposed to requiring a more of a meal or a gathering for making more less formal drinking. The winery did not spare, has not spared a dime or a penny or a dollar in, in these packages. Uh, these are beautifully packaged wines and the wine inside matches the outside packaging where uh, it's, a, as I say, it's a foreign company that they decided to invest in Armenia because they believe that Armenia presents a, a great opportunity uh, and they export these wines throughout Europe. And now we import, we also bring it to the United States right now and they're doing very well. Besides this r &E, they have a, RNE reserve at a higher level, which is a, a more refined, I would say, and um, the best of the barrels have been put together for that particular tasting, for that particular bottling. It also has a white and a rosé. The rosé is made with RNE grapes again, whereas the white is made with Voskehat grapes again, and the bottles are quite different. They, you will not mistake the uh, if you see these next to each other, you would know which is the white, which is the red, which is the rosé, because the bottles are quite different. When it comes Deb, what to do you packaging. think? I like it. And you know what? This is a nice summer red where it's not really heavy. You can sit and drink it. It's I'm, it's nice. I I am loving the aromatics of it, mm -hmm. um, the, the floral aromatics. And then it's interesting that on the finish the it is medium minus to me in body it's not i wouldn't call it a light bodied wine um it's got some body to it but um the the acid backbone is beautiful it's well structured mm -hmm. and the the cherry that's there and mm -hmm. the darker fruit is there but on my palate when i when i finally swallow it there is spiciness that just yeah, kind of hangs mm -hmm. out on your tongue. On the finish. That, right? Yeah, yeah I right. would. You know, nice spice if, on if the I can give you some reference points. Yes. Uh, some people have compared RNA to, to a range between a Pinot Noir and a Tempranillo. If you oh. take these two okay. wines, and depending on the winemaker, depending on the aging, depending on the overall treatment, the RNAs will fall somewhere between a Pinot Noir and a Tempranillo. That's, that's that. just, I don't necessarily agree with them, but it gives some people, in the, specifically in the United States, some reference points, what to look for when they're tasting or enjoying this, uh, uh, these wines. Uh, it, between those two, this one to me is sliding over to the Tempranillo side. See, to me, it's sliding to the Pinot Noir. Really? Yeah, I think it's lighter. I think if the body on it is lighter. I don't think it's... I just... But I, Maybe the body, but just that spice. Um, I, just that the spice, spice and light, which is... Tempranillo, to me, is such a aromatic grape variety. And this is so beautifully so aromatic. So I went by how it tastes. Um, oh. Mind you, the there is no oh, wood the body on the It's all stainless steel lighter. tank. This one is all stainless steel. Correct. No wow. wood treatment here. Wow. Okay. So that so is the a grape definite wine maker. does have makers. a spiciness then to it. It's like a, a mix between, for me, a, a white and black pepper, but it's not a really strong black pepper, but it just kind of lingers in the back of my, my throat. And that's where the spiciness comes from, is all that black pepper, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which you also get some of it in Carmenier. If you pay, Carmenier tends to have black pepper, green peppers. Whereas he's more of a black pepper. Black. I don't take and I don't yes. get any green pepper from RNEs. No, no. So before we go on with, with the wines themselves, 
the um, I, Deb, I, I'm, I'm going to steal your question because I want to make right. sure we we cover it um, about those the winery that was found underground. And can you tell us about that winery that was that was found underground and how significant that is to the wine world in Arani? Well, I mean, uh, the, the excavation was done by the Armenia's archaeological uh, at the main the archaeology department within the main Armenia University in Yerevan. And it goes back to 2008, and they discovered these caves where they found these wineries and uh, full of winemaking equipment, clay jars. The inter in interesting, they also found the oldest leather shoe there. <laughs> that's quite. They, that's took, the oldest they took it off so they could stomp the grapes. <laughs> ever discovered in the world. I mean, and besides, they found these jars. The pictures are everywhere on the internet. They call it mm -hmm. Arini One Cave, where uh, these jars, these clay jars, and they've done DNA testing to show that the DNA they found within these jars going back 6,100 years is the same DNA in, as in today's RNA grapes that are growing 50 yards away from there. That is so incredible. that's where how far this goes, and it also shows that Armenians have been living there 6,100 years ago and making wine. That's very important, also. It is so incredible. It, this is this this is testament to the overall winemaking uh, tradition, and that, that that's why they call it the cradle of wine because that's where uh, a lot of these wine making techniques and traditions have started from. Wow, that's, and they still do it in the clay pots too. So that's right. I mean, know. I've seen a. I've I haven't been there into the cave yet, but I've seen many pictures of them. It's really, really amazing how similar winemaking was compared to today. You still need the same technique, which doesn't take much. It just takes expertise. That's that right. is beautifully said. It doesn't yeah. take much. It just. You, you, they do it on its own, right? The nobody, nobody created wine. Nobody, it was, it was discovered, right? We didn't invent wine. It naturally occurs, right. you know. If you leave grapes, have the yeast on them naturally, so alcohol fermentation is going to occur naturally. So we just reap the benefits of what was going to occur naturally, and um, you know. But they have been create. They have been making wine and celebrating it for so long like that's really the birthplace um can they go in the cave like can you actually like yes yes to go they in have the tours cave? there you can go inside the cave absolutely oh wow on that note that you know how there's this whole craze right now of orange wine mm -hmm. where skin contact white wine they've had long-term skin contact that's how winemaking used to be in armenia so because they kept the skin out of the white grapes for a long period of time and now we call it orange wine or natural wine, however you want to call it. But that's how they used to make wine in Armenia a while back also. And right now they are, again, referring back, uh, coming back to making similar uh, white wines with a great deal of orange uh, con skin contact. And uh, they just call it heritage grape, heritage winemaking okay. because it takes them back to their uh, original way of winemaking. And we have some great examples of that here in the United States right now, from Armenia, a phenomenal, very refined, mind you, not necessarily unfiltered, but really refined wines made with skin contact, on white wine with skin contact, that are truly delicious. Beautiful. I have, I got, going back to the grape, um, the R any grape, um, I read that it's disease resistant a lot. So what is Correct. the weather and the growing season like? In Armenia, so this area is, tends to be high in altitude, about 4,000 feet in elevation, and the winters are extremely cold, and it, the, the, the soil is very rocky, and uh, so it's not a very hospitable place. So, uh, grapes, grape roots tend to thrive in these types of situations, so they work really hard to work really hard, and you're right, they are very thick skinned grapes, so they are resistant to a lot of diseases. So, and these are, uh, Plexora did not affect Armenia or Armenian grape varietals. 
uh, and like like what happened in Europe. So these are all very old uh, grapes, very old vineyards. Some of them are all very old. As I said, one, the, one of the next wines we're going to be tasting are 130 year old vines. That's awesome. And uh, we're going to save that one for last. <laughs> these are very old, very different in a sense that they're not available anywhere else. And that's why there's a lot of interest from Europe right now of European winemakers who are going to Armenia to learn about these and also apply their European winemaking know-how into American, into Armenian uh, grapes, Armenian wines. We have a lot of French winemakers, there are a lot of Spanish winemakers, a lot of Italian winemakers who are in Armenia right now who are making wine for either Armenian wineries or European wineries. And you you kind of dabbled into it a little bit early on um, about how, you know, I think we're, we're having conversations in the chat where we're like, oh, I haven't had an Armenian wine. We need to learn more about it. We need to see it. And I think that um, thankfully, like people like you who who have learned to appreciate it and have dedicated themselves to getting that, getting those wines out to the people. When you talk about a Rene in general, what, you know, you're saying it's a thick skinned, you're saying it, you know, um, they do amphora, but if somebody wants to purchase an a Rene grape from you and you have varying styles can you can you kind of go through briefly like that range of what they can expect a price range like from lowest to highest and what they can expect from the the expression of those grapes and why it correlates to those yeah. wineries? Yeah, gladly. Uh, as I said, we have we are the largest retailer of Armenian wines in the United States right now, and uh, we ship to forty three states. Include and plus District of Columbia. If you go to winesofarmenia.com, very simple, you'll see the entire selection, all the selection, all the wines there from many, many different wineries, uh, different uh, interpretation, different winemakers, different appellations within Armenia. And we have wines somewhere around $15, $16, and all the way up to $150, depending on your budget and how well. How interested are you? Um, we, we ask that if you have any questions, contact us. We'll be happy to guide you. And uh, work with your way up. If you're looking for something simple, we got that. If you're looking for something uh, distinguished, something different, something higher grade, that's available also. It all depends on your budget and on your taste. And we'll be happy to work with you to offer you guidance and point you to the right direction here and there and we also offer free shipping on six bottles or more so you can get yourself a small portfolio of these wines have a great night with your friends and family and get to taste some of these great treasures these are beautifully made wines most of these made are are made with these come from really small wineries these are ma, some of these are ma and pa operations these are people who have dedicated their lives into these into making these wines and offering them to the outside world and to the local consumption as well. But the, these are truly believers in what they're doing and we're happy to work with them. So it's just a matter of, uh, I know people who are into wine like I am, we always wanna try the next thing. What's next available? What's coming next? What's next? And this is the next frontier when it comes to Armenian wine, to wines in general. Uh, they are producing some really, really nice wines, very different, very unique, and we're making them available to the wine lovers in the U.S. Well, thank you. Should we go and taste our, our second? Okay. Our second which, one will, which will be the I, second? The old, I, old vote, I vote that we uh, taste Old Bridge. Yeah, because me too. I the 130 reserve I think is going to have so many stories about and comments yes. that I'd like to save that for last. Okay. So this is the bottle Old Bridge and I have no idea what that says above Old Bridge. Stefan, do you know what that that says above? That it? says Ingamurch. 
in Armenia, which translates into Old Bridge. Oh, okay. And it's a beautiful pic. It's like a pencil sketch yeah. of, of an old bridge. <laughs> so um, this, I believe what I read was it was established in 1998. So it's fairly an, a pretty new winery. Correct. This is you know, when, when when you have children, you're not supposed to say which one you love more. <laughs> you love it all. Uh-oh, I but think you're going to tell I a love secret. this wine. <laughs> I love this. I, I like them all, uh, depending on, I like some of, I love this wine. Uh, this is one of, this was the first wine. This and Voskeni were the first wines we brought to the U.S. Okay. And this is a, it's one of those small wineries uh, that, uh, that I spoke about a minute ago, how these are my and pa operation. Mm -hmm. This is a father and son operation. Uh, the father is the winemaker, the son runs, does everything else. These are truly dedicated people and they make phenomenal, phenomenal r &E red wines. They also make some, some white and some rosé, but this is, the, this is the wine you wanna have. This particular wine is uh, aged two years in uh, uh, Armenian oak barrels before it is released. It's got wow. a lot of structure, mm -hmm. a lot of character. And if you happen to be eating some meat with some fatty steak or ribeye, yeah, I can this see is that. the wine you want to have. Uh, it's got enough tannins to mm -hmm. hold up to any fattiness, any meat, and I've had this wine at some high-end steakhouse in Las Vegas and or in Los Angeles, and the sommeliers have blown away with were blown away with this wine. As a matter of fact, if you go to Alexander Steakhouse in Pasadena, you can find this wine by the glass there because wow, the sommelier the... was blown away. It's a, I, I'm it's liking a very, this. It's a it's a big wine. Some people tell me, oh, is there a Cabernet coming out of Armenia? I say, no. <laughs> but if, if, if that's what you're looking for, I can you see. should have yes. the Old Bridge. Mm -hmm. And the reason it's called Old Bridge is because the winery is right adjacent to the Arpa River. And okay. this bridge is on the Old Silk Road. It's one of the bridges on the Old Silk Road that people traverse back and forth between Asia and Europe. Oh, and wow. This and this bridge still there. You can walk on it, but you're not, supposed to, you're not supposed to drive over it, but you can walk over it. And uh, it's a beautiful setting with the Arpa River, which happens to be in Bayotzor, close to the Arani village. Okay, and so... It's, as no, I said, so it's one of my favorite Armenian wine because it's got character and it has... It's really, really, it, it gives you the full expression of the fruit and with all its glory, with all its uh, niceness and fruitiness. And uh, it's just a great wine. It is. It has much more tannic structure than yeah. the first Absolutely. one. Absolutely. This is a food wine. You need food with this mm -hmm. wine. Yeah, the, the yeah. gums are, the gums are, are yeah. tasting those tannins. But again... I'm still getting that same cherry um, mm -hmm. and um, I'm getting a little hint of, of like, um, uh, like a light menthol, like a light mint. Correct. Yeah. Correct. I, I get that too. Correct. Yeah. Uh, that's a characteristic of the oak, by the way, that they use. Is it? Oh, okay. Right. Right. So that's why uh, we didn't get it in Noah because that's stainless correct. steel. Correct. You know, right. in Greece, you have this thing called mastika, which is a must that comes out of the bark of the trees. This is similar to that. Mm -hmm. You get that over there, it's similar to that. So it's very common. But again, the, the dark cherry, the dark fruit, you're not going to escape from that. It's just that how you mend it, how you fix, how you work with it and to get the end result that you want. And uh, this, they do a great job. Imagine this is 2014 vintage, and wow, this well, wine yeah. was this wine was bottled sometime in around 2017, 
And now we're in 2022. You can still age this wine for another five to 10 years. No problem. I have some of the older vintage I'm saving, but going back to 2010, I believe. That I'm, hold, I'm saving, holding back to see how they're going to do five years, let's say. Well, that and was actually no going doubt to that be. This wine is going to do beautiful. That was my next question, its, too. The structure, because of its tannins and because of the quality of the fruit and the amazing winemaking that they have over there. Yeah, that so was going to be angel. both of our question. That was yeah. going to be our next question is, what can you expect to, you know, lie this down for? How long can a Rene be lie down for? But we're looking at a 2014. And this baby, people, it is yes. fresh. It yes. is. Sorry. There. There is. I mean, there's not much left. Of, <laughs> but there's no I'm bricking. There's no bricking of this at all. Mm -hmm. And the, the, it is fresh. It's still primary, you know, uh, flavors and uh, aromatics. This can go a long time from now. Correct. Correct. Um, absolutely. As I said, I've, I've had, I've tasted some of the older wines. They are, they drink beautifully. This is, uh, to me, over time, the tannins will soften even more. And, uh, but the fruit's still going to be there because it has nice acidity to it that will preserve the wine over a long period of time. And uh, it's like a great Saint Emilion. Uh, you can, if it's done well, uh, it's going to be there for you and it's going to deliver for you. Simple Absolutely. as that. Absolutely. So, in your on your um, online store, what can somebody expect to pay for for that bottle? For the old bridge, this one I believe is about thirty-two, thirty-five dollars. It's solid. Which I believe it's a great value given what you're getting. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, that is. I I, mean, I I wouldn't blink an eye at, at that because it's 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 a beautiful it's a beautiful wine and like you said it, it you can have a wonderful meal with it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's going to cut through that steak. It's going to cut through. Absolutely. You can see that with a, a nice steak. Yeah. yeah. And you'll be drinking something new, something exciting, something different. Yeah. And, and it's just uh, tell your friends about it and brag to your friends about it. Yes. And it, I mean, it's the structure, but it's so balanced with mm. the fruit, the acidity, the tannins. I mean, there's definitely a lot of tannins in there. That was the first thing I got no in my notes, you know, much more tannic, but it is beautiful. I am like so impressed. I yeah. really, well, thank really you. am. And I'll tell I, the winemaker. Yeah. Yes. And I think that you had, um, you mentioned it earlier about how, you know, when you years ago, our Armenian wines weren't really something that people were interested in because it was more kind of not necessarily bulk, but just more getting the wine out there and not so much quality. These two wines that we've tasted so far are are phenomenal quality i you know i think that they're they're spectacular wines they really are absolutely and uh again this gives you this shows you diversity of the grape in the different hands how uh, what yeah. can it be done given the same grape but again it's same with him you can get cabernet sauvignon made from saint helena compared to cabernet sauvignon made in uh, Santa Barbara, they're all going to taste different. Right. It just depends on who's the winemaker, what do they want to do with it, and what they're trying to achieve. So are these two bottles that we've, the wines that we've tasted come from the same region? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. So they both come from the same region. The one that we're going to taste next comes next. from a different region. Correct. So what in this region um, is so spectacular to grow the Oreni grape? In the, the, for the, you're talking about the first two area one? Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, well, it's their home. This is, okay. I mean, RNE is, as I said, this, that's where it started and it's grown throughout the United, throughout the Armenia. Uh, <laughs> and uh, this is where they belong. This is this is their hometown. They have the hometown advantage, so to speak. Okay. Uh, the soil, the whole terroir comes into play with these grapes and with these wines. The mm. soil, the air. These What's are in very the soil? Good. 
it's a uh, clay and there's a lot of clay there and a lot of rock very rocky mountainous rocky. area the, the the vineyards tend to be on a slope uh because these are mountainous high elevation areas so that's where that's you're getting the the nutrients from the soil and during winter there's snow on top of there there's snow uh, there all the two three months of during the winter months wow so uh it's a very cold not a very hospitable uh area for anything but these old vines they do wonders during in that climate in that area mm -hmm. Do you know, are these like, um, are the Irene, is it like a bush vine? Are they trellised? Trellised. Or does it vary from winery to winery? Uh, mostly trellised. Mostly trellised. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Um, so the last wine we're going to taste is the 130 Reserve. And that's because it's. 130 year old vines is that correct 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 this wow. winery uh voskeni is the name of the winery v-o-s-k-n-i and uh, this is from the ararat region so this is from Anya this is the Kat. area Art so this, is this the area which is uh north? to the Left of the Biozo region. Oh, Ararat. Okay, so we are here. So I read uh, is, there was a it was a guy from Boston that started this winery. Yes, indeed. That's a very interesting, sad story, yes. but interesting story. Oh, sad. well, share, uh, share, because I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me just briefly say that okay. this is more. You are more central. Uh, to the middle of the country as opposed to being southeast of the country. And elevation tends to be lower here than the southeastern region of the country. And if you look at it, this is the reason it's called Ararat region or Ararat Valley is because Mount Ararat overshadows the whole region. Oh, okay. 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 Uh, so you're going to have a whole is, different environment. You're going to have a whole different correct. climate correct. there. This guy in the on the on the label, his name was Sumpat. Uh, this guy comes to Boston around 1840s, 1850s, and immigrates to Boston and makes a lot of money in Boston. I'm not sure how he made his money, but he made a lot of money. He decides to go back to Armenia because he made he made it in the US and wants to start a winery in Armenia. And he goes back to Armenia in the big turn of the century, last century, around the 1900s, early 1900s, and buys a lot of land within Ararat Valley. But timing didn't help him, history didn't help him. Around 1914, 1915, the communist uh, revolution mm -hmm. happened, 1918, the communist revolution happens, and the communists take over Armenia and they confiscate it, his, and all his land, all his monies, and the guy dies penniless. Oh, very sad. Talk about bad luck. But about 80, 90 years later, his great great grandchildren decide to buy the lands back from the government. Isn't that wonderful? And today's Voskeni winery and the vineyards are on the same lands, on the same properties uh -huh. as their ancestor bought year, years ago, hoping to make great wine. Now they are making great wine. And wow. That's a, that's I think a, that's an amazing story. Absolutely. And uh, how history uh, does, uh, doesn't does deal us sometimes good hands, but uh, someone else from the ancestor doing something about it and realizes his dreams. Wow. Wow. Yeah. All right. So we're going to taste it. this. And what, so as far as the 130 is concerned, mm -hmm. uh, 130 refers to the 130-year-old vines that this, this winery has. 
they only make this particular wine from that vineyard. Oh, okay. These are very old, very low yielding uh, vines. And these are bushes, by the way, because of, and they make this phenomenal wine and age it for sometimes two years, sometimes 18 months in Caucasian oak barrels again, Armenian oak barrels again. And, and just, it's, it's a, it's a very effervescent, there's no, there's no bubbles there, don't get me wrong, but it's a very fresh tasting wine. It's a, it, this wine to me has soul. Uh, it has a sense of time and a sense of place. There's no mistaking that this is where it's coming from. Wow. This is where it's coming from, Arad Valley, mm. and it's Wait there it. for you to enjoy. It's got a, it's a very, I don't want to use the word sensuous, but it is to me. This is a completely it's different wine. Different. Yes, way different. Correct. Way different. Complex nose. I mean, I'm getting blackberry, uh, black raspberry, ripe black raspberry plums, yes. clove, a little bit. Of clove snack. is big time. Mm -hmm. A lot of spices, yes. Yes. Again, different winemaker. More importantly, though, different region where these grapes are from and very old wines. It's very smooth. Wow. Mm -hmm. Very smooth, but a lot going on. Yeah. Right. Wow. Um, this, is, this, this is the winery's most expensive wine, and it's their top seller. Wow. So, so different. Yeah. Yes. It is. It is so complex there's there's so much going on the tannins are much more elegant they're there the structure is there but it's it's you know where the the old bridge needs that needs that meal with it right now um uh that that's that uh graininess that happens on your gums mm -hmm. with the tannins so those are very gripping tannins these tannins are there but they are they are smooth. They are Correct. silky, uh, silky Correct. tannins. Yeah. Wow. This, this is such a different wine. Oh my gosh. Indeed. You could have a cigar with this one. Yeah, it, actually, many have. Yeah. <laughs> I don't do cigars. My husband does, but you could definitely. It, <laughs> it actually has. Um. It to me, it has that that uh, smoked meatiness to it. Mm -hmm. the, yes. You know. Wow. And I see on the label, um, the Mundus Vini, it's got a gold medal in the Mundus Vini. Correct. Correct. This wine consistently is highly awarded. Uh, gets a lot of points, a lot of... They submit these to a lot of European wine competitions, and they do very well. I can see why. Mm-hmm. Now you had said so. These are all kind of mom and pop or or family run wineries. Correct. Are there also cooperatives in Armenia? Uh, not in Armenia, I combined Armenia and. <laughs> but there are Armenia. some very large wineries. Okay. That also produce uh, the whole range of different wines at different price points and different quality levels. There are those also. Uh, I personally prefer the small operations because Absolutely. you're getting something yeah. different, something unique. You're not getting something mass produced. Mm -hmm. Yet those are here as well. And we carry those too. I mean, I don't want to limit people's choices. But the ones we import directly are the smaller, op smaller winery wines that are unique and express the wine with a point of view. People, you, you know what you're going to get because uh, that's what the winemaker wants you to have. They're not trying to please everybody. Right. They are making right. wines that they want to make, that they believe their their grapes will produce the best quality of what they're producing. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But we have those also. I mean, there are there's some of these larger wineries, international cooperatives. Where, not, when I say cooperative, I mean international large multinational company they have wineries in Armenia also then they are making some uh, some great wines some okay wine they run the whole gamut and the price point how many wineries are there in Armenia ah uh, since the interview started it's I've got, I've added a <laughs> few more <laughs> that's 
Uh, really, uh, wine, wineries are a growth industry in Armenia because of the location, availability of the grapes, quality of help people working there, uh, winemakers and uh, different people available there. There are so many wineries popping up. I get we get constantly contacted by people who want us to import their wine to the U.S. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah, I mean, we ha we've come from one extreme where we were there was really hardly anything good 15, 20 years ago to where we are, we have the spoils of richness. So, so much great wine coming out of Armenia that uh, uh, it just, it's a phenomenal time. Really. That's what I'm saying. We're going through some re Armenian wine renaissance right now because of the availability of good quality wine that are coming out of there thanks to uh, great winemakers. Well, um, Evelyn has posted like uh, tasting notes from for this old vines. And the last sentence of it says uh, develops um, a less intense woody character and more fruity flavors. And um, it I, it is I, like mm -hmm. the tasting that I was reading through the tasting notes. It is really an amazing wine. And absolutely. I, like yeah. I, Stefan, this is a hat trick, man. This is three for three incredible yeah. wines. And oh, thank you. When we when I first contacted you and you said you were gonna send us three wines to explore the the variations that or that the expressions can have, I was like, Oh, you know, like how much could there really, you know, it's gonna be a lighter body, a medium body, a mm -hmm. heavier body, you know what? But that is not what these are. These are very, very um, different wines. And they're all, to me, Deb, do you agree? They're all kind of in that same body, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's not it's not a heavily oaked influenced or a no. lightly oaked influence. It's really the expression of the fruit that's coming out inside. Yeah, you're you're seeing wines. the expression of the grape in each yeah. of these three wines. You're not, you're not, it's not being overpowered by oak. Um, and it's just, they're wonderful. I mean, so the, if you, anybody out here there that's watching this webinar or listening to the podcast, um, on the replays and stuff, if you see Arini wines, you know, with the Arini grapes on a wine list, don't hesitate to, to purchase right. the wine by the bottle or the glass because yeah. you won't be disappointed at all. And I, the wine I tried when I did the other podcast was a different wine, and that was exceptional also. So um, it's pretty much wines so from Ar Armenia. Armenia. Wines of Armenia yes. are really doing spectacular things. And I just, I, I'm, I'm blown away by the differences. Um, but this one is, uh, I'm sorry, this, this is. <laughs> you know what? I like them all. I can Me too. As, as. As when you say, I want to say a porch pounder, but you know, it's it's, I think lighter in mouthfeel and the Noah, than either one of the following ones. Yeah, and and this one is is really nice. This you can you know taste the tan. You know you got the tannins and it's a little bit more body, but this one takes the cake. <laughs> what the one thirty? The one thirty? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can definitely. Well, it's it's the vines. It's it's 130 year old vines. You can just taste the history, the tannic structure in it. It's much more, um, much more there, but but refined. elegant. And, yeah, refined. Yeah. I mean, the first. Three what can I say, ladies? You have great taste. <laughs> yeah, no, you, I, these are incredible. And just what can what does what do you sell the 130 for? Uh, that retails for 50. And that's yeah. not bad at all. <laughs> oh my God, people, people, people! <laughs> Fifty dollars. Really... This is an incredible. And I, you know, Debbie knows I don't typically say this is a great wine or this is, you know, I. And really, neither does Debbie. Debbie yeah. is more about you know the experience. Also, this is an incredible. They all are. three wines are wonderful, but this one is like. This one is so complex and just so it so 
dark and it's dark and mysterious. It's, <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> is. You know what? It is dark and mysterious. That's yeah. now you got, I got a great title. <laughs> there you go. Incredible. But, Incredible. But, so we do have to say though, um, what is your favorite pairing? And again, we've got three different expressions. So we've got three different meals ty types that can go with this. But what do you enjoy pairing an Arene wine with? You know, to me, more than the food, it always comes down to the company I'm with. You know, if I'm with the right person or right company, right friends, right family members, and doesn't matter what I'm pairing these great wines with. I'm going to enjoy myself. They're going to enjoy themselves. They will have a great time. But having said that, uh, I think uh, given the spiciness uh, that you get from some, of, some of, from these wines, you can pair these with more spicy foods and they will do well together, as well as fattiness from the from the old bridge, for example. By, by the way, this will hold up to steak as well, very well. But I believe uh, the old bridge will do very well with the fat, given the structure and the acidity that it has. Mm -hmm. So it all depends on what kind of state of mind you're in, or what you're looking for, and uh, then you just have a great night. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> It won't be difficult to enjoy yourself with these wines. No, not at all. Not at all. So that brings us to just about nine o'clock here. So our hour just flew by. by. And this has been absolutely fantastic because I am going to look for Armenian wines on, absolutely. on a wine list when I go out. And Stefan, can you just share with people again? Evelyn has been amazing as yes. always and has been sharing your Twitter link and your Instagram link you. and Facebook. your website and Facebook. Everything, Evelyn, is incredible. But for people who are listening and not seeing, can you share a little bit about where they can find you on social media, how they can place an order for these incredible wines? Well, thank you. I really enjoyed this. I appreciate the opportunity. And I'm glad these wines are getting the, uh, the attention that they deserve. Uh, these and many, many, many other Armenian wines are available at, very simply, winesofarmenia.com. Uh, I like to keep things simple. And they're available. As I said, we ship to 43 states plus D.C. And uh, we offer free shipping on six or more bottles. Uh, these wines deserve the attention that uh, that wine lovers should give it to them. And again, winesofarmenia.com. And on social media, we're available on uh, Instagram under Wines of Armenia, on Facebook, Wines of Armenia. Uh, again, let's say simple and consistent, and we'll get these great wines to you. They, it is incredible. Thank you so much for joining us. It, it's Thank you very much, ladies. Enjoy the wines, and thanks for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. I thank you so much yes. for sharing these three wines with us. And honestly, like the, to taste through and see the differences between the three was such an experience for me. So I appreciate that. So Good. thank you. Yeah, me too. Thank you thank so you. much. Wonderful. Thank you very much. And have a wonderful evening. Thank you, you. Too. you too. And I have just a little bit left. This is actually well, the Noah. So I'm going to raise my glass. It's Lancha. And thank, thank you, you everybody, for joining. And here's to cheers. Wines of Armenia and the Arene Grape. Gracias. Yes. Thank cheers. you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.